can women prey on men? Absolutely. Right. This is stored knowledge that we've pretended we don't have. Everybody knows it. Everybody. And it's unbelievably dangerous to talk about. Um, this, I give the example in the book of the Indiana Jones films. One of the Indiana Jones films, um, there's a famous scene where the whole class of sort of the very attractive young women all looking moonily at Harrison Ford and his teaching and and they're all, oh, the sexy, hot, you know, archaeology guy, which is, of course, completely familiar in real life. And <laughs> yeah. anyhow, he um, uh, uh, he's giving the class. And one of the women, one of the girls, I mean, they are girls, really, in the class, has written Love You on her eyelids. And, it's, and she blinks at him so he can see this. And I find this fascinating because this, again, it, sometimes, sometimes it comes up as a meme online still. But everybody knew this type. It was so familiar as a type that the woman or even the young woman mm -hmm, mm -hmm. making a really overt play for the male. It's so familiar that it was in family movies. Mm -hmm. And what about and, the spinster with the toy boy? You know, and we sort of pretend that these types don't exist. We, we sort of denied ourselves access to archetypes that we pretended don't exist. It's unlearning, really important learning. Well, yes. Well, uh, because in, in these things, we're in the realm of, for a lot of this, you know, because within the law, as I was saying earlier, there's just, we're in the realm of manners. And the manners, manners are things that you, you, you're best trying to acquire as you go along from other people and learning from your elders and other things. And the elders at the moment are saying, we don't know what we know. <laughs> We're not passing it on. Don't touch. Uh, Good luck. It, figure it out for yourself. Yeah. And, and by the way, some of them are men. And you know, but <laughs> that's, no, but, that's the note, isn't it? That's that be, be home, be home by one. Yeah. But it's just, it, as I say, it's complex. It's complex, but it's not as complex as we're making it. What do we do to move forward then? Several things. The first thing is we have to realize what's going on and like just, just get out of it. We have to get out of this. We have to get out of this zero-sum game, particularly the zero-sum game whereby in order for, we think, for women to do better, men have to do worse, or for gay people to thrive, straight people have to do worse, or for black people to thrive, white people have to do worse. We've got to get out of this. This is just so unhealthy. Mm -hmm. It's it's a um, waste of individual life, and it's a terrible opportunity cost for a society because none of it is fixable, is my view. You know, there are things you can do worse and there are things you can do better, but we're never going to fix it. it. There's never going to be the lovely interlocking nirvana that means that we all move to some perfect state. It's just not the case. So what should we be doing? And this is the really, this is this is the thing. And I think that a lot of clever people, and particularly a lot of uh, people who've had certain advantages in their lives, are helped through this, and they know how to get through this era. I give very exa various examples of this, um, uh, the sort of cuttlefish phenomenon, among others. But my point is, is that there are people who've worked it out, and I'd quite like their knowledge that, among other things, a lot of this is bullshit to be more widely understood because we need to get out the other side of this in larger numbers. Now, my view is that this is, this is because it's partly just something for people to do. It's a, it's a lifestyle choice of its own and a hobby and a religion among other things. It's worth thinking what, what, what should we be doing then if we're not doing this, but let me put it this way. I mean, imagine if we actually solve the identity politics thing, which I say is not going to happen. And what would it look like? It would look like us saying, it's great. I've worked out where I am in the hierarchy this morning. Uh, and I'm allowed to speak between 11.30 and 11.32. <laughs> and you do that for some decades, and then you die. <laughs> now, I'm not up for that. And I trust you aren't either. No. Um, now, what could we be doing? Well, um, I think we should be hugely ambitious, and I don't have all the answers by any means, but I know that we should be much more ambitious than that in what we're going to do. I, we have the 21st century ahead of us. We have 
better luck than anyone in human history. Anyone. Not just anyone alive today, but anyone alive ever. So why would we be wasting our time playing identity quick fix politics? I would submit that we should try to get ourselves off this in order to dream bigger dreams, to do really meaningful things, to not work out what we shouldn't be doing and what we're not allowing ourselves to do and what we don't think is in our lane, but to break out of that. You know, the the, the something uh, um, Jordan Peterson and I and others have discussed a few times in the past has been this strange view of life in this era as if as if the ideal life is to be harmless like harmless from cradle to grave not cause harm at least i didn't emit any co2 and <laughs> i never never upset anyone and i never spoke when i shouldn't have spoken and so on and i just think we've got to break out of that and say no no the aim of this generation is not to just is not just to be harmless as our highest aspiration it's to be extraordinary, to be great, to be inventive, to be intelligent, to be loving, to be caring, to be great in all of our personal relationships if we can and recognize it will fail a great deal, but do as well as we can. And then in the rest of our lives, be extraordinary and, 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 and great and do things that people will talk about for generations afterwards and look at with admiration. Uh, you know, we don't look at the great buildings of the past that have stayed standing and and look at them with anything but awe. And it, I can't see that in this generation. If if our ambition is to look at our navel long enough <laughs> to believe we've understood ourselves totally and then die, I see nobody standing looking at a statue of that and think if anyone could do that in marble. And thinking, those are the guys. 